in the intense world of medical emergencies. One patient, three times stab wounds. There's nothing more extreme than a code red. But it is a two-car RTC. That's correct. It means there's an immediate threat to life. Got one male still trapped in the vehicle. In the West Midlands, a highly specialist team are on call 24-7, ready to race to these major traumas. Four minutes. By road and air. Zero three, we are lifted from Cosford. Responding to the most severe 999 calls. Open up the Lucas device over there for me. Day and night. All right, well done. From car crashes. Oh, just need to check. To stabbings. We're gonna put some oxygen on your pal. Here, where time is critical, lives will be saved. Oh. On roadsides, in back gardens, and inside homes. It's okay, coming off the chest. These emergency doctors and paramedics use cutting edge trauma techniques and surgery normally only seen in operating theatres to save people from almost certain oh. death. Sorry, mate. Oh, no, mate. Oh, no. We're going to sort you out. Filmed over two months with the critical care team. Ready, set, slide. We captured every vital second as these specialist crews work to save lives. On roll, ready, steady, roll. Tonight, a teenager is bleeding to death from a stab wound. OK, put a direct on there, then. Don't fight, don't fight. I know it's scary. An accident with an angle grinder. Is it pretty nice. bad? OK. Yeah. He hasn't seen it. Ah. OK, all right, bud, all right, bud. Ah. An elderly man with a serious head trauma yeah, you've taken a bit of a beating, haven't you? I think the road's won this time. And a woman has a life-threatening seizure. Emma Lee, you're going to look after you, OK? Service patient breathing. He's come off his bus boy. He's Conscious. unconscious. He's breathing. All his teeth are gone and everything. He's, he's in a bad way. His face is at the, at the road. And he did he seem to be taking regular breaths? He's breathing very, very fast. He's the patient so, um, in the road. He's in the road, yes. Yeah. How old do you think he is? I'd say he's in his 60s. Not all his teeth, certainly. We've got an ambulance en route, OK, so just keep your yeah. eye out for the ambulance. I will do, yeah. A local ambulance has already been dispatched to the scene of the accident, but there's a high chance the man has suffered paralysis or brain damage, and his life may be at risk, so critical care backup is needed. We'll get, we'll get back up. Male in his 60s that come off the motorbike. Uh, 60, that's obviously, thanks very much. Um, I think it'll be about eight minutes or something. Critical care paramedics Will Meadows and Colin Apps deal with life-threatening emergencies on a daily basis. Their advanced trauma training gives the most gravely ill the best chance of survival. Yeah, the information's come through that he's... Um, unconscious, that would suggest that he may well have serious injuries, including injuries to his head. Ten minutes after receiving the emergency call, they are on scene. The local paramedics have taken the injured man into their ambulance. Yeah. Sorry, guys, uh, my name's Will, uh, one of the critical care paramedics. I'm uh, Joe. Paramedic Joe quickly briefs Will on the details of the accident so he can begin his assessment. He's been travelling on his motorbike, no helmet. Push bike, sorry. Push bike. Yeah, apparently the front wheel has locked up. Yeah. He's gone over the handlebars and full impact on the front of his face. OK. 73-year-old Fred, a retired crane driver, was riding back home after visiting his 99-year-old mother when the accident happened. Bystanders state that he didn't move to start with, um, so we're querying a period of unconsciousness with him. Um, on our arrival, he sat up, he's talking, he's fully orientated, he knew where he was, but he couldn't recall the incident of what had happened. OK. Fred's injuries are so extensive, he needs urgent hospital treatment and a brain scan. We've got a good two-inch laceration above his right eyebrow. Um, initially, they said that he wasn't moving. 
At the very least, he has concussion, but the memory loss and blackout could be the sign of a much more serious brain injury. It's Friday night, and Dr. Adam Lowe, a consultant anaesthetist at Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital, is getting ready to start his shift for the critical care team. Tonight, he's paired with full-time critical care paramedic Rob Davies. It's very hard to predict on any day of the week, but Friday night, people are out and about. Uh, social nights, there'll be more people in the city centre. We may well be busy in and around Birmingham. So yeah, we just get our checklists uh, done, make sure we've got all our kit ready. Hopefully a nice, gentle evening. 12 minutes later, an emergency call comes through to the base. Hi there, thank you, good evening. Um, take your hands off, please. It's going to be a 21-year-old male with a stab wound. Um, the stab wound is two inches long on his upper back, um, query with a knife. Um, it also says on the notes, query a friend doing outside. Um, there's nothing to suggest police on seeing that. Last year in the West Midlands, there were nearly 5,000 violent knife crimes. Reducing the number of deaths is one of the critical care team's main objectives. Thank you. I'm sure the victim told you as well. Crew is on route. We believe these offenders are outside the property and the patient is inside the property. Details are being passed to the police at the moment. All right, thank you. Just to confirm, these employees are not yet to attend them, so we believe the offenders to be outside. I that's received. Uh, we're about two minutes out, so is there an RVB point over? With the attackers believed to be nearby, the trauma desk instructs Adam and Rob not to go directly to the house, but wait for police protection. The two people are outside who they think have done it, uh, so they're advising us not to go directly to the house. It's that balance, really, isn't it? Because if it's still an aggressive scene or, or not secure, we don't want either ourselves or, or other members of the ambulance service getting injured. Thank you. Uh, please just pull the location. Just stand by and you'll It's 7.38pm. Police and ambulance crew arrive at the address. So Adam and Rob get the go-ahead to enter the property, while our camera operator is told to wait outside. Right. Oh, all right. Are you guys on your own? Yeah, yeah. You are going to need to go to hospital. Let me just see your front, make sure you haven't got any injuries here. Oh. The man is in shock and distressed with a stab wound to his back. It's unclear to Adam and Rob whether or not he knew his attacker. OK, well, lie down onto your side, then. Lie down onto your side. Oh. This on the on his left side of his back. We're just going to lift and go around the corner, then, yeah? Happy? But he's lucky. After assessment by the critical care team, it's decided, whilst it's a nasty cut, it's not life-threatening. They're not nice incidents to go to, um, but we go to stabbings fairly regularly, so it's it's not a surprise that we're being tasked to a stabbing. Unfortunately, it's one of those things, and living and working in the urban environment, stabbings are fairly common and are uh, quite a significant workload for major trauma centres as well. In the West Midlands, critical care paramedics deal with around 30 stabbing incidents a week. and they don't have long to wait for the next one. Please reach the ambulance. Is the patient conscious and breathing? Somebody stabbed him on the, on the neck. OK. Do you, know, do you know if he's breathing? He's breathing at the moment, yes. He needs the ambulance as quick as possible. What? A lot of blood coming out. Is the blood spurting out? Yeah. It is, my love, OK. Oh, my God. Just keep <laughs> pressing on his neck, my love. We're coming as quick as we can. Oh, God. I've never seen anything like this. It's getting worse. Just keep the pressure on that bleed, love. You're doing all you can. It's 
City were on the way to someone who's been stabbed in the neck and it's spurting and there aren't any crews there yet, but they're going to let us know when someone gets there. The second stabbing of the shift sounds very serious. Spurting blood may mean a major artery has been cut. Adam and Rob need to get there fast as there's a danger the victim could bleed out and die. You're clear on my side. They are stopping. Yeah, still stopped. Police and the nearest ambulance have also been dispatched to the scene. Adam and Rob are just five minutes away, but with a serious stab wound, every second counts. Thank you. Um, just to keep you up there, we're working having uh, extra coal on this. Um, I think people are panicking a lot on the scene. Um, the drugs going on the scene is still bleeding through the towels that are being um, basically applied. There's a lot of blood on the floor um, and patients that's left as well. Yeah, that's great. We're one minute out. A stab wound to the neck could have severed airways as well as arteries. As trauma specialist, it's one of the most challenging situations Adam and Rob can be faced with. Hi, guys. I'm Adam. I'm the doctor on metal Hello, just behind you. Are you OK? OK, don't, don't fight, don't fight. Adam immediately takes control of the scene, locating and assessing the size and severity of the neck wound. Can you hear us? OK? Right. So quite a lot. What sort of did you breathe in? We get the trolley. Feel like this. OK, we guys. Get... He's bleeding heavily and struggling to breathe. <laughs> OK. Got... Big. Adam, can you see down there? The victim is just 16 years old. <laughs> Ambulance services, the patient breathing. In 2012, the West Midlands Critical Care Team and Midlands Air Ambulance joined together to create a specialist trauma response unit. We've got more experience in dealing with patients who are critically ill or injured. Let's do a few little checks on you, OK? Let's see how you're doing. 38 doctors and 34 critical care paramedics bring hospital-level care to those most in need. What we provide is to bring an advanced care team to the patient at the roadside. I'm just going to have a little lick of your foot, OK? Oh, nice deep breath. Well done. By focusing on only the most serious emergencies, their enhanced skills and training often make the difference between life and death. I think they've proved that with a good trauma network nationally, that you're 60% more likely to survive a trauma. It's very intense at times and demanding, but thoroughly rewarding. I love my job. <laughs> Ambulance services, the patient breathing. Uh, yeah, he's had his hand in there, a steel saw. A steel saw? Yeah, he's gone straight through it. Uh, yeah, I don't want to describe it too much. How far through his hand has the saw gone? Uh, then you need to move your hand, please, because I need to describe it too much. Uh -huh. I need to put your hand over your face. Hold uh -huh. oh, on. Uh -huh. oh, very, 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 very bad. We had someone to him as soon as we can. Just keep the pressure on the wound, directly on the wound. An accident with a power tool can inflict life-altering injuries. An ambulance has been called, but they've requested specialist trauma backup, and critical care paramedic Tom Waters is now en route. Looks like I'm going to be first on scene, and it's someone, they just said he's cut through his hand with an angle grinder. DIY gone wrong. The benefit that I think my team and myself can, can go to is we can hopefully make that assessment to really identify what hospital is best for that patient. Ten minutes later, Tom is on scene. The local ambulance crew are already there. Hello. Hi, you're right. So what's happened? Some... He was cutting the door frame um, there and went straight through his hand. 30-year-old bricklayer Daniel was cutting the timber on a workbench using an angle grinder 
with a four and a half inch circular blade when he lost control and it sliced through his right hand. His wife Stacy found him and has been trying to stop the bleeding. Okay, and how bad is it before we have a look at it? Is it pretty bad? Okay. He hasn't seen it. Okay, what's your name, sir? Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Are you, do you live here, do you? Is this right? Okay. Yeah. The paramedics have been on scene for five minutes. Daniel is in a severe state of shock and close to passing out. They've got him to raise his arm above his heart to try and stop the bleeding. It's fine. Uh, have you got your trauma pack with you? Uh, no. Yeah, I think maybe if, it, if you're saying it's quite bad, we'll get our bandages just in case. Have you hurt yourself anywhere else? No. No, so it's just your hand? Yeah. Okay. Do you mind if I...? Yeah. This impressive towel you got on here. It's the second one. OK. OK, so what we do, before we um, open it up, we'll get our bandages just in case. Daniel's in excruciating pain and can't bear to look at the damage he's done. Let's have a look. All right. All right. Are you all right to come round here and cut his sleeve off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some scissors on me, if you want. Yeah. yeah. It's all quick. Yeah. OK. I know, I know. Sorry, buddy. We'll give you some pain relief, but what I want to do is have a real quick look at it first. Until he can actually see the wound, Tom doesn't know if Daniel has cut an artery or is in danger of losing any fingers. Both require immediate surgery. Ah. Okay. All right, bud. All right, bud. Did he get himself off the floor and self-mobilised into the back he, here? Well, no, he, we took the stretcher out to him, cleared his C-spine, managed yeah. to stand him up and he stood onto the stretcher. In Walsall, critical care paramedics Will Meadows and Colin Apps have been called to the scene of a serious head trauma. He's got a full laceration to the top of his lip, um, complete laceration on his tongue as well, so it's kind of lizard tongue at the front. Right, eh? Um, three teeth have come out and also laceration to the bottom lip where it's hanging. OK. 73-year-old Fred was travelling at speed on his bicycle when he was thrown headfirst onto the road, landing on his face. He blacked out and is now dazed but conscious. Have we found the teeth? Or are they... yeah, we've got three of them there, okay, yeah. OK, so there's three missing and you found them all? Yeah, okay. the ones at the back look quite broken as well. There's nothing there I can see okay. that's gone through the panic yeah. at the top. Mind just opening your mouth there, sir? Stick your tongue out again, Fred, for me. Will checks Fred's mouth to be sure there is no obstruction to his airway or damage to the roof of his mouth. How are you breathing? Is it OK? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Does it... Are you in much pain at all? No, no pain. Just a, a little bit of a bruise there, yeah? Yeah, try not to touch your face there, yeah. sir, OK, cos we don't want to contaminate that, but... Yeah. Yeah, you've taken a bit of a beating, haven't you? I think the road's won this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Will is most worried about Fred's unseen injuries. His head took the full force of the impact. Head traumas are very unpredictable, and there is a risk he may have damaged blood vessels that could turn into a more serious bleed on the brain. I don't know what happened, actually. No, I don't think you're going to have the answers either, Fred. Accidents happen really quick, don't they? Are you on any blood thinners at all? No. No? No medication, no, no medical no history. Medication. Okay. Is it still bleeding inside your mouth? Yeah, try not yeah. to touch it, though, Fred. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Dr. Yeah. you know that bit between the top lip and your nose? Yeah. That split vertically. Yeah. Will calls into the trauma desk to alert them that Fred is likely to need reconstructive surgery on his face. Um, he's got split lips. He's had three teeth knocked yeah. out. Oh, They're all accounted for. And <laughs> his tongue's been split as well, sort of in the middle, and um, quite aptly described as, as lizard tongue. Got a pulse rate of 98, SATs of 96%, T-set clean, and a rest rate of 80. C-spine is clear. Part of Will and Colin's expertise is to ensure Fred is sent to the appropriate trauma centre that can treat all of his injuries. OK, well, I think he's probably going to be needing some Max Fax um, yeah, no. specialist. Well, yeah. Fred, what we're trying to figure out is where we're going to take you, where's best to get your face repaired, all right? Mm -hmm. We're just going to figure that out at the minute, OK? Yeah. The Queen Elizabeth Major Trauma Centre in Birmingham has specialist maxillofacial surgeons who can assess and treat Fred's head wounds. Okay. Not surprised. That lip damage, that filtering damage, that's all from the front teeth, isn't it, where he's, he's pretty much kissed the floor, hasn't he? So... You're a tough bloke, Fred. Mm. Oh, he's still hard. <laughs> Fred, I'm going to ask you again, sweetheart, do you want any pain relief? Yeah. Yeah, just a bit of fine for you. 
Do you want pain relief for no, you? No, no, no. Fair enough. Try not to keep down Amazingly, Fred seems to be untroubled by his injuries. He wasn't wearing a helmet. If he had been, it may have deflected some of the force of the blow and given him more protection from serious long-term brain injury. If you're getting blood into your mouth, just let it dribble into there. Try not yeah. to force the spit, just let it dribble out. As it stands, he will need a brain scan to rule out any potentially fatal clots or bruising. How fast do you normally cycle there, Fred? Oh, no, no. It's not got a battery in it, has it, your boy? No, no. no. It's so an just an ordinary racer. A racer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. 40 more now, then. Head yeah. down. <laughs> Trouble is going to give them a heads up. Uh, so you can be seen sooner rather than later, and if they can't manage Fred, then they'll get him transferred to the QE where, where you can go. All right. Lovely. We'll get out of the way. I don't know. Okay. Take care. Have a nice day. All right, Fred, you mind how you go, OK? Next time, wear a helmet. Yeah, I don't know what <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much. Cheers. It's a six-minute journey to hospital. Happy that Fred is stable, Colin and Will leave him in the care of the paramedics, freeing them up for their next emergency call. Yeah, he's a, they seem to be stoic. Yeah, very good pe pain threshold. I would have been crying. Ambulance service, there's a patient breathing. Um, she's having a fit. Does, has she been diagnosed with epilepsy? I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure, sorry. Okay. She's fitting really badly. 6 2, uh, we're showing about five minutes away. It's reports of a 39 year old female who's having a seizure in uh, the Merry Hill shopping centre. She's been having headaches, and now today she's gone on to have a fit. A woman is in the throes of a potentially life threatening seizure. The critical care team are urgently needed, and critical care paramedics Mike Andrews and P. Edwards are en route. <laughs> That's what we're seeing when it goes Seizures are caused by surges of electricity in the brain and are an indication of epilepsy, a neurological disorder that kills 1,000 Britons every year. Oh, there you go, visual. I'll get the red bag. Do you mind grabbing the drugs? In the shopping centre, a building society clerk has suddenly collapsed at work and started fitting uncontrollably. Her shock colleagues called 999, an ambulance crew is already on scene. Hello, how are you doing? All right. How's it going? I'm Pete, I'm one of the uh, paramedics. This is Mike. 39 year old Emily is lying unconscious. The ambulance paramedic who has been looking after her updates Pete on her condition. She was fitting for about 15 minutes before we got here. Yeah, okay. Um, she's fitted for Ooh. 2 minutes 54 while we've been here. Yeah. No history of head injury today or anything like that. So, so we just got migraines recently, had a seizure today. Just today. Just today. OK, all right. Can you squeeze my hand, sweet? Um, Can you squeeze my hand for me? As part of his assessment, Pete needs to know if Emily's ever been symptomatic before. So she is an epileptic, is that what we're saying? Um, yeah, when she was little, she did use to have it, but not recently. Right, OK, so she hasn't had a seizure for a while, but she has had yeah, them in so the past. We told me about this time last year. The last one. Okay. People's jaws often clamp shut during seizures, which restricts the airways. If starved of oxygen, Emily could go into cardiac arrest. So Pete needs to administer diazomal, a muscle relaxant, to stop her convulsing. Should we put a bandage on so we don't lose the IV access? Are you able to? Is that all right? I'm just thinking that if she starts fitting again, we might might get pulled out, mightn't it? Worried that Emily may start thrashing around when she fits. Pete needs to be sure the IV line is securely attached. I think they've got IV access. If she starts fitting again, we'll, we'll go to as moles. Yeah, is that all right? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. And BM and everything's all right. I think the best thing, we'll get a stretcher. Yeah. Get her onto the vehicle. Yeah, okay. Pete wants to get Emily to hospital, but she takes a turn for the worse. Is 
Is that wound or is that dressing? What's that there? In Birmingham, trauma doctor Adam and critical care paramedic Rob are trying to save the life of a boy who's been stabbed in the street. Can you see? Yeah. Here. Okay, so we've got one behind me here. Yeah, is there anything at the front of the neck? The 16 year old has a deep wound to his neck and it's spurting blood. Okay, put a direct on there then. He's already lost about a litre of blood. The human body contains five. Adam knows he can't afford to lose much more before he passes out and goes into cardiac arrest. What's gonna, what's gonna happen now? Listen, what's gonna happen? Don't worry about them. Look at me. What's gonna happen when I get onto an ambulance? Okay? Let me just see if there's any blood in your mouth. Open your mouth wide. Good lad. Okay. Pressure from his wound is causing the boy to panic and restricting his breathing. Just calm your breathing. You're doing absolutely fine. I know it might feel hard where you've been injured. OK, it's away from your voice box. I know it's scary, OK, but you're doing fine. I'm pushing on the side of your neck. They need to get him to hospital for emergency surgery to repair the blood vessels in his neck, but moving him risks tearing the wound and sudden catastrophic blood loss. Not time. OK. okay. It's all right. right. Listen, have you got phlegm at the back? Just spit it out, mate. Just spit, Just spit it. it. Spit it. Spit it. Spit it. Spit it. Adam needs to keep the boy calm while maintaining a constant life-saving pressure on his neck to stop the bleeding. Do you feel able to stand, mate? Yeah. OK, right. Good lad. Yeah, I've gone. I'm not going to let go because I need to put that pressure on, OK? Hold on, guys, hold on. I need, well, I need to keep the pressure on. Can you get around, mate, to you? So, bump, bump there, that's it. Lay down on the bed. OK. Once on the stretcher, it's now a race against time to get him to hospital. Fine, mate, you OK? Can we have our bag on the back? Yeah. Uh, my hands are going to be a bit tied up just to keep that pressure on. So let's get some straps on. How are you doing? All right, well done. OK. I need to keep to the QE. Yeah, I need to keep my hands on to stop the bleeding, OK? Because you have bled reasonable amount. Any medical history I need to know about? Asthmatic? Sickle cell? No? Are you allergic to anything? Right. Okay. Leave a little bit of room for me. That's it. Well done. Good, so a bit brighter in here. On the ambulance, Adam and Rob can now fully assess the damage the knife has done. Hi, mate. You're right. he's, he's bled a fair bit of volume and he's still bleeding past my hand, so I need to get a grip on where that's coming from. Tacky 130, active from the back. It's not anywhere major vascular, but it is actively bleeding. Can I have that cellox? So I can see where that's coming from now. Well, Adam. Using a gauze coated with a blood clotting agent, Adam manages to stabilise the wound as much as possible to prepare for the journey. Nice and steady. All right, buddy. We're going to sort you out. We're going to take you to the QE. Good work. You're doing great, mate. You're doing great. Have you got pain anywhere else? No. OK. 12 minutes after they arrived on scene, Adam and Rob are en route to hospital. OK. Rob, do you want to carry on looking at access for me? Yeah. Yeah. Give us that arm. The boy is in such a critical condition, they both need to travel with him, continuing emergency care throughout the six-mile journey. I'm going to do the TXA. Yeah. You can do a set of OBS. Arriving at hospital 11 minutes later, Adam delivers his still critically ill patient to the waiting emergency staff. That's one of the things we are there for. We will just bring some advanced decision making in terms of which hospital we're going to. If we won't go to the nearest hospital, we will travel a little bit further with an unstable patient to get them to the right major trauma centre. Let's get the stretcher, let's get something to get her out and get that sorted, all right? In Dudley, critical care paramedic Pete Edwards is fighting to control the seizures threatening 39-year-old building society clerk Emily's life. Emma Marie, we're going to look after you, OK? Let's get a BM done, make sure her blood sugars aren't low. We've got her on oxygen, OK? 
if she yeah. starts really fitting again and it's prolonged, we'll give her some diazomols yeah. and obviously we'll just have to then do a bit of airway maintenance in case she goes out. And we'll just pop the SATS Pro back on, just keep her eye on her SATS. Whether or not we have the condition, one in 20 of us will suffer a one-off epileptic seizure at some point, and they can be fatal. Just have a look at that, mine, make sure I've drawn up the right thing. It's diazomols and it's in date. OK. Yeah, 10 milligrams in 2 mil. All right. Nine minutes after the last one, with a sedative anti-seizure medication on board, Emily's condition seems to be improving. Pop her onto a side just for, like, into the recovery position. Yep. She is more alert, and her convulsions appear to have subsided. Yeah, super. Yeah, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. But Pete's critical care training makes him ever watchful. And even in the most severe cases, despite us giving anti-seizure medication, the patient continues to fit, uh, and this can become time-critical emergency. With a sedation, there's a risk her body could struggle to breathe. If we don't manage the airway and the brain is starved of oxygen, there is brain damage, brain death, and ultimately cardiac arrest. The priority now, get Emily to hospital. Emily, my love, can you hear me OK? Listen, we're going to get you up the hospital and get the doctor to look at you. We've just got to get you onto the stretch. And I'm just going to pop the oxygen off for now. I'm going to sit you up nice and steady, just bend in the middle. OK. Right, Emily, lean back against me and just have a moment, cos you've been lying down, all right? All right? Do you know where you are? No? It's a bit strange. We're going to help you. All we've got to do is get you onto him and get you nice and comfy. OK, so we'll go on through. We'll have a little rock, so... One, two, and three. Up we go onto our feet. Lovely. <sighs> Super. Emily, swing your legs up. Let's get you comfy. That's it. The ambulance will take Emily to the nearest emergency department. Thankfully, on this occasion, she appears to have made a quite rapid recovery. Some patients will just have one seizure, make a recovery, and they're absolutely fine. But we do go to these patients who recover, and then sometimes it might be minutes later or, or, or even seconds later, they'll have a further seizures, and this can be quite complicated. And those sort of patients, we get them to hospital where they can be assess further sometimes just to make sure there isn't anything more untoward uh, going on somewhere. Mm. I'm about to point out a 10. Mm. Okay. Oh. In Stourbridge, critical care paramedic Tom Waters is trying to assess the damage to Daniel's hand after he sliced into it with an angle grinder. Okay. All right, bud. All right, bud. Turn your arm round. All right. You feel me touching you here? Okay. Daniel has a three-inch wound, an inch and a half deep between his thumb and forefinger. Once the towel is removed, it starts bleeding freely again. We've got that thumb for me. Calm. Okay. All right. What we're going to do, buddy, is we're going to clean it up. It's in the corner bit of your thumb. Don't make you obviously know where it is. Lucky for Daniel, the blade stops short of the bone. Straighten that arm out for me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well done. I just want to straighten this hand for me. Daniel is fortunate. All his fingers are still there, and there's no obvious nerve damage. The wound will now be cleaned with saline solution and dressed to immobilise the fingers and help stop the bleeding. It's just obviously in the crease of his thumb. He's got good circulation here. Yeah, and he can feel me touching his hands. Yeah. Um, so and it's, it's yeah, so I think it's just more soft tissue. Yeah. Um, we're going to cover it. Yep. And then I think we'll... Do if we just take a picture? So yeah, 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 that's fine. The, uh... One of the paramedics takes photographs of the wound to show to the hospital doctors in A&E so they can assess whether he needs immediate surgery. Yeah, nice and still. Sorry. Right. Keep still for us, buddy. As soon as you've done this, we'll get you some pain relief. Last year, almost 5,000 people were admitted to hospital following accidents with power tools. I'm going to bandage that up. Right. It's going to be a little bit painful for a little while. I'm sorry, mate. When are you working next? Don't say Monday. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be. I think it probably feels and looks worse than what it is. Yeah. I think it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be x-rayed, yeah. and it needs to be stitched back together. Cheers for that. 
I don't know how you look could look in it to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. There you go. Just take your time, nice and slow. We're no rush. Feel right? Let me just walk behind you. With Daniel now recovered enough to walk out to the ambulance, Tom is happy to leave him in the care of the local crew for the journey to hospital. He'll go to the local A&E where he'll get it cleaned. He most likely will have some formal antibiotics and an X-ray, and then it will be decided on today if he needs specialist care to treat that part of his hand. It's very much in the forefront of our minds that we want him to get the best care for his hand. So he's a young chap, he's a labourer. We obviously need to get him back to work as soon as possible. It could have been a lot worse. It's still going to be a really painful injury, but hopefully I'll have a really quick recovery. One of the trauma team's key areas of expertise is paediatric emergency care. Being called to a critically ill child is every paramedic's worst nightmare, so they need to be able to rely on a high level of skills and training. Breathing? Yes, he is. Are they conscious? Yeah, yes, he is. And what's wrong with the patient? Um, he's just gone completely down the stairs. He fell down the stairs? Yes, he's two. Top to bottom, was it? Literally, yes. I think his wrist might be a bit broken. Oh, and did he bang his head or is he landed on his I'm feet? not sure. <laughs> I don't know how. He landed kind of upside down at the bottom. Six two. Six two. I've got your notes of two year old that's fallen down the stairs. Is that correct, Emma? Uh, that's correct, mate. Yeah, top to bottom of the stairs has fallen three metres or more. Child's had a head injury. They are conscious, but they're clearly got a fracture. Well, Roger, that's all received. Thanks, Mike. In Albury, critical care paramedic Faye Pollock is en route to a code red emergency. A two-year-old child has fallen three metres downstairs, landing on his head. Just confirming that he has fallen top to bottom of the stairs. He's got a head injury and a wrist injury. An ambulance has been called, but with the potential for life-threatening injuries, the trauma team's enhanced skills are also required. Obviously, because it's a child and they have their whole lives ahead of them. The last thing they want to do is be fighting for their life or be disabled in any way because of an accident. Three minutes later, Faye is on scene, ready to be briefed by the ambulance crew. This is young Josh, Josh, two right. years of age. Mum said he's got his big habit at the moment of doing Superman down the stairs. But Which she's in way. here and she's heard thump, 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 thump. Yep. I haven't touched him, I haven't done anything. Done we anything. literally just okay. got here, found out the history, that's it. OK, I'll have a chat to Mum. Is he, is he acting as normal now? He no. seems quiet. Yeah, he's yeah. very hyper, Josh is. He's right. constantly on the go. Mum Rachel confirms there has been a worrying change in Josh's behaviour. The worst case scenario is that Josh has fractured his skull in the fall and has a potentially fatal bleed on his brain. Um, this, this, yes, is, is almost as if he's either covering his eyes or his, his arms hurting, I'm not yeah. sure, but this is an unusual thing to put his arm across. No, we can do that with strangers. So that might be a comfort thing, the yeah. fact that we're yeah. right, yeah. OK. Critically ill or injured children can appear to be OK, but then suddenly go downhill. So the little things like that are only mums, yes, yeah, only yeah, mums yeah, yeah. know, but it says a lot to us in yes, that. Yes, definitely. He's, you know, he's not photophobic. Josh, can we put something onto your thumb? No. 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 Josh needs to go to hospital to be scanned. First, though, Faye needs to take his blood pressure and heart rate, but Josh is too distressed. He hasn't been sick, has he? He's no, not... no sickness. No, don't. If he's gone down the stairs the way he has, you're not going to come down without the mark, are you? No, you're not sick. Because I've not really been able to get too close to be able to really yeah. 
get my hands on and the only thing I'm doing when I'm getting near him is just Makes him more upset. At the moment, yeah. Mm. He has also been guarding his left arm in a way that suggests he might have broken it in the fall. I tell you what, let's see if we can try a little jig. Can I have can I have Mickey a second? Is that Mickey? Mickey Let me just have Mickey for a second. Let's see. Let's let's put Oh, don't you want to give me That's a good sign that his arms are all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yourself as a trick. Encouraged by Josh's reaction, Faye tries again to attach the monitoring equipment. Do you want to pick which finger? Which finger? Do we do it on this one? Do you want to try? Do you want to try it on your foot? Yeah, come on. But he's not falling for it. Mommy, do it. Mommy, do it. He's certainly a good colour in his lips, good colour in his face. The fact that he's able to understand and say no are all the signs that I think he's probably just shocked himself. Yeah, distressed himself. To help soothe Josh, Faye wants to administer some paracetamol. It'll make you feel better, sweetheart. Good boy. Come on, Josh. Okay. Oh, that's a good boy. Well done, Mum. No, you've done that before. <laughs> Paramedic Nikki has a trick up her sleeve to try and take Josh's mind off his troubles. Distracted by the bubbles, the paramedics manage to attach the oxygen saturation and heart rate monitor to his toes. Yay, well done, Josh. Should we see if we can get him over there? You can catch him. Can you reach Yay. over that way? Oh, well done. That has worked so treat. Well done, you. Yeah. Oh, I like the balls. Yeah, this is a great amusement. <laughs> Doesn't matter about the patients. <laughs> Apparently the wounds on his legs are from previous Superman yeah, impressions, yeah? It was her, but it doesn't stop him. It's excitement though, Dad. It's the excitement of going head first down the stairs. Josh looks to be making good progress, but Faye still wants him to go to hospital to be checked over by the emergency doctors. Mum, is there anything that you need? No. Immediately. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, God. Wow. Oh, that is so one prepared that. mother. Bye bye. Thank you. You take care, Mum. Well done for keeping you cool. Yeah. <laughs> she leaves him in the care of the ambulance crew for the six mile journey to Birmingham City Hospital. So you're never quite sure what injuries they may have. And as, as you saw, he's so scared and he's so. Um, anxious the fact that he's got three strange people in the room. He immediately curled up into a ball on Grandma's lap. So there was no way that we were going to be able to assess him for his injuries properly there until the paramedic got an absolute beauty with those bubbles. 